recording. Okay. All right. Well, here we have Patty Parks and Kenny Neal, and we're here to talk about their great new the great new album that we have com coming out soon here, Whole Nother World. Uh, so the, I want to get started talking about this great album here and uh, talk about how you guys have collaborated on it. Uh, it comes out May 28th. Yes. Is that yes. still the correct thing? Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So tell us about how you guys came together to working on the album and how it all came together for you guys. Okay, Patty, you can go for that one. Okay. So, you know, I've been to Memphis and performing over time for quite a bit, actually. And it actually started in 2006 at the IBCs. But I think uh, a couple of times during my presence there, I ob obviously met Kenny and talked to him. I, the last time that we're actually having a deep conversation was at the IB, or not the IBC, there was a symposium um, that was in Memphis, Tennessee, talking about one of the programs that I have, the Nurse and Blues program. And that's the time that I kind of engaged in conversation with Kenny at that point. But if you go a little bit further after that, uh, Kenny came to Buffalo to play at a pretty big blues festival. And that's when our conversation started to take place about the potential of getting together and doing a project. Okay. It's been history since then. We, we, uh, she had brought um, some songs to me that she had recorded prior to this CD. And uh, she wanted to know if I can um, take a shot at it and want to go in. And I said, well, you know what? I think I would like to start from scratch with you. Um, I, I didn't want to go in and touch anybody else's work. So I invited her down here to Baton Rouge at um, the first house I ever owned back 30 some years ago when I moved, I moved back here about six years now from Palo Alto, California. Mm. Um, the first place I ever bought, I still had it. So I turned it into a living quarters for musicians in a studio and they come there and record and stay. So she came down and, and that's when we really connected, brought out some songs and we went in the studio with my younger brothers and some of my younger musicians that, um, I'm, I'm kind of paving and leading the way for them, teaching them how the blues work. And they're great artists, great musicians. So I brought them in and uh, we started to track with Patty. And I think it turned out real well. Oh, yeah. I the think one of, yeah, I think, you know, Kenny, what, when you were talking about, you know, your studio. And for me, when you guys picked me up at the airport, if you can imagine, you know, Kenny brings me back to the neighborhood where he's got all his friends, right? And already, I don't know if you did it on purpose, but you set already the pace for me to kind of connect right so yes. i mean right down to eating catfish right i mean yeah, everything right, right? <laughs> starting to live and breathe the beautiful music culture that's there and kenny's a mentor so in his studio he brings a lot of young musicians that are just you know anxious to you know find out about the music business and he has he's precious in terms of how much time he has and he, and he walks them through everything so that was really impressive to me kenny yeah, well, you know, we got down here in Louisiana, man, we got to give you our food first. The hospitality come first. Then we give right. it. So uh, we, we just want people to feel welcome. And uh, it was great having you here, Patty. It was really great. And I'm so happy about our uh, final product. Oh, yeah. Oh, another world. It was a whole nother world for you. That's Being right. That was it. That was it. You brought something else out that I didn't know was in there. So thank there you. There you go. Yes. <laughs> How, how long did it take to record the album from beginning to end for you guys? Well, I don't really remember because I would work on and off, on and off like that. But uh, we got it done over the period of about seven months, I guess. Right, so, right, right. That, would you say that, Patty? Yeah, I mean, you know, there were some, I think I went down twice just because I wanted to do a few tweaks on the vocal. But other than that, yeah, it wasn't yeah. that much longer, right. But, exactly. but actually tracking the songs, we took maybe about three or four days. Yeah. So when I went down there, you have to understand, I wasn't listening to the band tracks before I came down there, right? I got a privilege of hearing the music live when they recorded it, then saying on the track, right? So that yes. was a whole different scenario for me, right? It was unbelievable to hear the musicians in the studio playing. 
because that kind of set everything for me, right? It got yeah. me in the mood and all of that. And it's just totally different, you know, for sure. Okay. So how did you guys come about deciding which songs to record? I mean, did you record anything else that wasn't, that didn't make the cut on the album or pretty much you just stuck to the songs that are on there? Yeah, I think we pretty well stuck to what we decided to do. Right, right. Um, that's the way I like to work, man, because I figure it's a waste of time if I do a whole lot of songs <laughs> and not use them. It's, you know, so I figure, okay, these are eight songs that are great. Let's focus on this and uh, finish them up. Yeah. But he's got, here's the thing. Kenny's brilliant. Don't tell anybody, right? Oh, no. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. He said, hey, why don't you, why don't you listen to this song, Baby B? It's an acoustic, right? So that's why I love the album, Whole Nother World, because I hadn't really done a serious acoustic, right? And Kenny's playing the harmonica and he's playing acoustic guitar. And, you know, I, we did that in real time, right? We said, here, look at the lyrics. Let's see how this goes. And, and poof, it was unbelievable. It was, it was like we were setting a, a site in a movie. If you listen to a baby B that Kenny wrote, you know, with Bob Greenlee, right? And um, yeah. it, it just turned out so good, you know? And, yeah. Uh, but the other songs Erica had originally um, had recorded. Yeah, we, we, had, we had a girl from this town, Erica Gearing was her name, and she recorded these songs. And uh, we lost her right after we did the album. So, and this was a, quite a few years ago. I mean, 18 to 20 years. And she was just so great. And I hated to see some of these songs go down the drain. Yeah. So I pulled them out for Patty as well. And you did a great job with them, Patty. It was good. Thank you. Yeah. I felt it was a mission. You know, it was an honor. Yeah. because I could just picture this girl would have been a star at this point. Her vocals were incredible. So for mm -hmm. him to give me an opportunity to be part of a project that he was involved with really made it for me, too. Yeah. And, and I, I was so I was honored, you know, yeah. Bring these songs back alive again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so, Kenny, you had a hand in writing a few of the songs on the album. Uh, do you have a certain method or process on how you go about writing a song? I'm doing that right now. I change all of my music before I go for the lyrics. Because if I sit down and try and figure out the lyrics, man, forget about it. But when I hear the music, the music tells me what to write. It, it's it's like it talks to me i and i'm i'm glad i figured it out and i don't know if it's it's just a magical thing for me but if i sit and listen about two or three times to that song i got a i got a story to tell okay uh was there anything else that you wanted to add about the new album um as far as is, is, what would be the best place for fans to purchase it stuff like that well, in our digital world, obviously, you know, we, any fan can get it online, any streaming, you know, it's available out there. It's dropping, like you had said, on May 28th. Mm -hmm. um, also, they can go to the PAParksBandSite.com. You can pre-order the album right now if you wanted to, but the album will also be in hard copy available through my website as well. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else to add about the album at all? Well, I, you know, I like for the fans to really, you know, take out some time and um, and have a listen to it. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And it's just a great album, great music on it. And uh, I had fun doing it. And so I we like to share it with the fans out there now. So get a chance. Please go over and have a listen or order your CD and uh, enjoy it. Yeah, I definitely want to commend uh, commend you, Kenny. That was a great, uh, the sound, I, I just love the production of the album. I, I just find all the instruments, the vocals, everything is sounding very crisp and sharp. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, you don't always come across a good, nice sounding album all the time. They're, they're far and few between. And this, I really think you guys hit the, hit the nail on the head as far as the uh, production here. Yeah, we... Uh... I just um, I just finished uh, 14 songs for Tito Jackson. Uh, he he's releasing his new album, so we're gonna tie up and uh, and start putting the musicians together that I I produce and uh, putting shows together next year. So I just finished his stuff, um, his his album out. 
Um, and I'm also a guest on it as well. So hopefully next year, 2022, we all will be out there touring and sharing the music that, I, that I'm having a chance to produce these days. <laughs> Yeah, I would assume with uh, all this uh, downtime of not being able to play live too much too often right now, it's probably definitely still keeping you busy enough in the studio and everything. Oh, yeah. What a wonderful idea I had when I moved back to turn that place into a studio because everybody are coming from all over the country. They get a chance to get the music, the food and a lot of love from us and good music. So um if any listeners out there want to come down to Baton Rouge, they can go over to KennyNeal.net. So, uh, Kenny, it appears you keep a pretty busy schedule, obviously. But what kind of things do you try to do, like to do when you have, when you do have some free time? I don't have free time. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get the house. I bought, a, I bought a house just for a project when I was, uh, when the pandemic started. It's about 90 years old. So we put new kitchen, new floors, new plumbing. Uh, everything is new. Now I'm going to Home Depot and get me a for sale sign and nail in the front yard. <laughs> I'll never do that again. <laughs> yeah, the work but it never. Fun. It, kept me, it kept me busy through the whole time, man. I had people come in, in and out, and they was doing the work. And it's a beautiful old country home here. And, um, set on an acre of land so i had that project going as well as in the studio mm -hmm. but i closed the studio down for, me, for probably about seven months i just didn't want to go in there and do any work with anybody so it's it's just now opening up now again okay yeah All right, but I, I go home depot in and out <laughs> The Home Depot is your free time is spent at Home Depot. Yeah, yeah. So after 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 this place go, I'm gonna chill out and enjoy my old cars now. There you yeah. go. Oh yeah. Around. Yeah. All right, uh, Patty. At one point, you took time away from the music business. Um, was it hard to walk away at that point? And what brought you back? Yeah, it, it was, but I, I took the wrong door. I took door number one early on in my life. That, that's what people, I say, be careful of door number one. But yeah, um, music yeah. wasn't a part of my life for a really long time. And, uh, you know, I did, the, you know, raised, you know, my children. And uh, I, later on in life, I happened to actually meet up with a guy that I was in a trio when I was 16. And uh, he said to me, well, you know, are you singing? And I said, oh, no, that's all gone. You know, I got married young. I, I you know, raised my kids. And, and um, he said, if I put a microphone in front of you, it's all over. Well, I guess he's probably right. Because after that, you know, he said, listen, why don't you try the blues? You got this beautiful, soulful voice. And the connection just became real for me. So in 2006, I was in the IBCs. You know, I represented our area for our International Blues Festival, a challenge, rather. And then after that, it just kind of ballooned. And, you know, I was in the National Women's Showcase in, in Memphis, Tennessee, about three times, uh, earned some, you know, awards that way, and then got entered in the uh, Buffalo Music Hall of Fame in 2016, um, cut an album, and now I'm right on the other side of Whole Nother World, which is just an unbelievable experience for me with this career that I started again. So... That, that's my story in a nutshell. I was going to ask you if you had a couple hours, but that's where I'm going to <laughs> All right. Uh, the last thing I want to ask you about is the uh, program you started, Nurse and Blues. If you can just kind of tell us a little bit about how that and how it all came about. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, I, just like a lot of people, have been either have a member or know somebody that uh, whose child or a young adult that has been engaged with, you know, unfortunately, chemical dependency. Um, and so being a nurse as well as a singer, right, a blues singer, I couldn't think of a better way to use the blues genre in a healing way. So I designed a program called Nurse and Blues, where a board certified music therapist does musical interventions, plans of care that are reflective of, you know, uh, the influence of blues music, whether it's through lyric or whether it's a recognition of lyrics and active participation, it could be from drumming or anything like that. And it serves like a, um, a way for which these kids can actually, you know, maybe um, work through some of the things that have maybe 
caused as a, you know, a, a difficulty for them in their lives and be able to kind of bring it to the surface. So that's been going on for about four to five years. Uh, we served about 1400, um, you know, people from girls 13 to 18 in one campus and then older adults on another campus. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to leave you guys with just uh, giving everybody an update. Uh, we'll start with, um, we'll start with Kenny. So what are your plans for the second half of 2021 here? Well, to just put everything, line my ducks in a row and have uh, a couple of artists completed to go for next year uh, um, that, that I'm producing. And right now I'm right in the middle of producing my new CD. And it's, um, uh, it's going to be called, I think, you're going to be the first one to hear, uh, Straight from the Heart of Louisiana. And um, I'm working on it right now. And I, I spend all weekend this weekend in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and in Indianola, where Mr. B.B. King from. Uh, I went to his burial site and his museum this weekend and uh, paid a visit over there. And I got a lot of great shots for promotional shots in the Mississippi area as well. So um, that's what I did this weekend. So I'm working on my project as well as um, some of the other Louisiana artists we have down here, like Rock and Doopsy. He's, uh, he's come from a musical family, but they're more Zodico from Lafayette, Opelousas area. Mm -hmm. So I'll be putting, I'll be sending Zodico music out there to the fans as well. All right, and Patty, uh, what, what's your plans for the second half of the year here? Well, you know what? We're starting slowly as things are starting to open up. You know, we're booked right till the early part of, you know, the fall. And then we've already started booking for 2022. So we're, we're keeping our ears open to make sure that we're all moving in the same direction where we don't have a stop, right? Because we've already dealt with that. So that's kind of where our sights are. We're just paying attention to the cues as they start to open up and, you know, people are longing to hear music. They're just longing to do that. So, you know, I can see that things are opening up in our area. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right. Well, I um, want to wish you guys good luck on the album. I think it speaks for itself. I think, you know, it's definitely uh, going to do some good business. It's definitely a great album and uh, we'll definitely um, let everybody know about it and let them know about this video and everything. Um, oh. Other than that, I definitely thank you guys both for all your time, and uh, it was nice talking to you. All right, thank you thank very you much. Care. Take, Take care. care. Okay. All right.